And oh, it's yeah. actually getting to the point with the inflation and the high taxes that the it's starting to really crush the 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 real poor people, and it, that is going to start moving up. And once you get into the lower middle class, then shit's really going to pop off. So it's already happening. Well, yeah. if you see on a lot of the uh, social media platforms, younger generations, ironically, the ones being targeted for certain social media platform bans, are literally discussing how they can't afford to eat. And when people get hungry, they tend to act in very different ways for multitudes of reasons. Some of it just physiological of losing nutrients. But regardless, when people don't eat, bad things come. Correct. Yeah. All no it. revolution in history has ever happened on a full stomach. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. that Keep is... them fat and happy. We oh. need to. We need to put that. Hey, uh, Dave, write that down. We got to put it on a T-shirt. What is it? Say it again. Say it again. No revolution in history has ever happened on a full stomach. History on a full. Yeah. So that's why. I like it. That's why when women stop cooking for us and emptying our balls, we get a little testy. <laughs> no pun intended, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't that city that had two tails? They uh, had some uh, issues like this before everything. Bit, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Good book. I recommend it. Yes. Anybody who thinks that this can't happen here, yeah. read that book. Well, I first just... of all, the people that I know that have literally looked me in the face and go, that's ridiculous. It can't happen here are all liberal ball bag idiots. They're jack boot lickers, and they don't even realize that they think they're the resistance. Yeah, I know. That's why I don't <laughs> I really have nothing to do with my former D&D &D liberal type dudes. I, I these people do not understand how the world works. Well, well, here's the thing. They're all highly educated, but I believe they were taught what to think and not how to think. Yeah, they were, they're not educated. They're indoctrinated. Because I went back and forth with when I used to like have them on my page on Facebook. I went back and forth with them. Literally, I'm like, here's the studies. Here's the article. Here's the uh, stats from the, uni the Unifier crime report crime for, yeah. and they're like well yeah I, I can't trust those sources i'm like unfriend <laughs> I, I i literally i can't deal with the well, frustration I, I have too much shit to do oh well, to be fair um the uniform crime report is trustworthy overall as an aggregate but when you're seeing you know jesse jackson mm -hmm. you know bob marley haircut looking mother fornicators out there getting picked up for various crimes and being classified as white Correct. so they can tilt the crime stats. They have a point. It's just not the point they think they're making. Well, yeah, but if you go and you look at the Uniform Crime Report starting about a decade back, you did not have as much of that. Yeah. You did have them uh, put a lot of the Latino crime stats into the Caucasian. Oh, yeah, uh, but now it's just getting worse now. Now this has been going on since at least the 80s in the U.S. at least. People don't like stats. That's why they're always fudged yeah. and manipulated. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. Yeah. Yep. So after a while, all of this shit that's piling up and the system which cannot support it anymore, something's got to give. It will collapse. And I hope, I sincerely hope that the U.S. will not devolve in a civil conflict. I hope there will be people who will be able to somehow defuse it because if it happens, it's not just the U.S., it's the world. The U.S. has a huge presence in the world. I, I know that people are not happy that the U.S. has appointed itself to be the world police. But hey, if, uh, let's say, an equivalent of what happened in Afghanistan will happen worldwide, like the U.S. just taking its toys and going home, the world will consume itself. Yes, sir. Everything will be on fire. The people who are going about their day to day now, like not even the ones speaking up and everything like that, but the average person trying to go through their day to day when they when they finally had it, their breaking point. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is that, sorry, Pop, the U.S. has examples of it. Yeah, yeah. it's one of their reasons why they're the, the left, especially, is so eager to destroy history. So we can't mm. see the correlations and examples that would predict the future. Kind of like when you watch this show and we bring up historic examples. Yeah. Well, uh, one example I have, which is not exactly uh, distant history, is the, what was the greatest and longest breakdown of the rule of law and social order in the U.S. in the 21st century? 
Oh, heck, I don't know. Kung flu. <laughs> no, Hurricane fucking Katrina. Oh, huh? oh yeah. And yep, makes sense. Wow. Yeah, and yeah. not only did shitloads of people lose their homes, and uh, there was some fuckery going on, you know, some uh, melanin and rich gentlemen decided it was perfect time to start looting. <laughs> And the cleanup crews, which were sent by Halliburton, among others, they also engaged in some reprehensible shit, like looting homes and bulldozing them and marking them as hurricane damage so that their company could make money rebuilding them. So people in the disaster zone, what did they do? They started organizing. Some of it was by race, but mostly it was by community. So families, uh, friends, neighbors, and local businesses, they came together, they pulled their resources and skills, then they barricaded their territories, they set up watchtowers and vantage points, and then they established foot and vehicle patrols who shot on sight anyone who looked like a looter or was wearing a uniform. Guess what happened to all of these people? They survived. Yep. That's yeah. what uh, cracks me up when you explain to leftoids the concept of walls that work. It's not to keep people that you hate out. It's to protect the ones that you love. Yeah. And it, well, it does it, both, actually. But. Well, yeah, it does both. But the, the primary reason, I don't lock my door because I hate everybody outside. It's because I love the people who are inside. All right, Zed, while this uh, turmoil was taking place in Georgia, how did you guys keep warm when it got cold? Well... First of all, we had uh, lots of blankets, and pretty much uh, we wore like uh, seven layers each. So uh, full because, Eskimo? Yeah, yeah, full Eskimo, because winters in Georgia are quite cold. The no, summers are hot, but winters it. are cold. You're full of shit. I bet there were a lot of unplanned pregnancies when it got that cold. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, but, that's one way to keep warm if you're about to die of frostbite i'm just saying yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> unless your peg deep falls off what, what else just emotional damage what else uh, <laughs> the staple fuel for us was kerosene gasoline yeah. yeah gasoline was expensive it was hard to obtain so kerosene burners with a cooktop they were the staple in every single house because kerosene is very energy efficient uh, these burners do not require purified kerosene. They can run on contaminated kerosene as well, and you can store it for decades. I was, yeah, I was just going to bring that up. Yeah, a lot of survivalists rely on kerosene because you can store it for so Well, I mean, here in the lair, we have a kerosene heater, and I think I have like 20 gallons yeah, of kerosene. But, but, but no cordless hole punchers. Those were all tragically lost. Yeah, the they, I, I, those fell over and... A tragic boating accident. I, know. I saw you dive in after him. There I was. I mean, it was like a, a Willem Dafoe and platoon moment. I told you, just let him go. <laughs> Chopper in the back. Of the it was so sad. It was a sad. Day. And here's the I thing: cried. if you're watching this show and you don't have a kerosene heater and at least twenty gallons of kerosene on standby, you're fucking up by the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know if. Furnaces, even when shit's going good, furnaces can go in the blink at any time. Correct. Well, where we're at, you have weather you have weather problems that knock power out all the time. Constantly, yeah. 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 And actually, Modern and there, civilization runs on electricity. Well, yeah. here, here in the lair, I actually want to put a, a wood-burning something or other in here if I decide to keep this place. <sighs> that's the... Well, we put one place. in uh, my mother, the house I have in uh, Berkeley with, for my mother. Yeah. And I had to run a stainless steel liner up there. And Steve and I have an inside joke about your pipe is in my eye. And <clears throat> do I want to know? We <laughs> want to go by 30 foot <laughs> or 35 feet of the uh, six inch stainless steel chimney liner. Okay. And we're stuffing it in his blazer and we're trying to drive it back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's in there. I'm sitting in the front seat and it's like spilling over into the front. And we're driving. And he looks over and he's like, your pipe is in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed for about 20 miles. Oh, ah, God, I mean, the, the timing was perfect. God, it's hilarious. <laughs> hey, sometimes the joke is it all comes down. Timing is just, it's yeah, all about well, half a comedy is timing and reading the crowd. Mm -hmm. 
You can have a hysterical joke, but if you don't deliver it properly. Yeah. It's a fart in church. <laughs> well, those can be funny, too. Yeah. To be fair. So we brought up the kerosene heaters. Um, uh, another thing, uh, don't be alone. No loners? If you think you can lone wolf your way through something like this, well, there are far less uh, difficult and agonizing ways to get your meat suit unzipped. <laughs> <laughs> Life is oh. not a fucking movie. You do not have plot armor. To most people out there, if you're alone, you'll just be a walking box of loot. Yeah, absolutely. Correct. And that's why this uh, this everybody special and gets a trophy, but we're going to divide everybody into these individualistic smaller groups of completely unskilled shitheads. Uh, that's not going to work out too well in the long no. run. If the, when the shit hits the fan, because this is a win, it's not an if. Um, there's a lot of people who are going to be the first to go in zombie land. And it's not just going to be because of cardio. It's going to be because of stupid. That's yeah. Weird. You need people. You can't, uh, you can't stay up 24 seven. Yeah. One of the reasons that a lot of families made it through the great depression when people were starving to death left and right is because the family was still close knit. Correct. Now, yeah. not so much. Not so much. I mean, they're they tell you that like when you're 18, you should leave the house, go off on your own, blah blah blah. Get as far away from your home as possible. And now the indoctrination of trying to separate children from their parents is happening earlier and earlier because they realize that they could, you know, create the alphabet hysteria by pounding it into these kids' heads when before they can even really comprehend well, well, what they're Let's be reading. honest. That community, because they're in the victim mindset. They're already walking corpses if this gets bad. Oh, they're going to be you, you know bullet that, right? sponges. I don't want to see that happen, but, or should I say, <laughs> you haven't seen me in a while, but historically mm -hmm. speaking, that's what happens to the weak when shit gets bad. Yes, and guess what? If you are walking around with this mental illness that I wish you would get help for, other than sawing off parts of your body, <laughs> uh you're in for a big surprise, especially if you've gone through the transition, you have to take medication every day that you're not going to be able to get that. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to D I E. Well, they're going to probably get cancer too. Cause you know, when you load your body full of hormones, it doesn't naturally produce. It uh, tends to not go too well for you. And what's that called? It's called the death rebound. Hmm. No, I just <laughs> call it Darwin. Yeah. <laughs> Darwin's got an 18-inch stainless steel strap on. That shit will come right out your mouth. Ouch. Yep. You just... can't cheat Mother Nature, no, no matter can't. how hard you try. No. Yep. And speaking yeah. of medicine, uh, if the grid goes down, if just electricity goes down, everything else will go down as well. Because the grid relies on people maintaining it every day. And in many places, it's, it's already overloaded and failing. So... No electricity yeah. means no water because pressure in pipes is maintained by electric pumps. Yes. Uh, next, uh, we have refrigeration and heating. These things are gone. And finally, no food because farms and fisheries and, uh, I don't know, slaughterhouses, they also rely on electricity to function. All right, and you said, here, here's yeah. some of the stuff I have here. I put this together before mm -hmm. the show when I, you, when I was talking to you. Kerosene plus a heater. Uh, antibiotics. Yes. Medical supplies, gauze, tape, bandages, suture kits. And, he, and here's something that's going to be a kind of embarrassing, but it works. You get unscented or just plain cotton maxi pads. Make great bandages. Yeah. And you can go out right now and stock up on them. Don't, and if anybody questions, hey, why are you buying all that? This guy and my wife's got two pussies. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're one of them. <laughs> Next, 90 days of food, preferably dehydrated. Ability to purify water. A compass, maps. Here's an important one here. Dental hygiene stuff. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Even if you got to rip a hair out of your woman's head and use it to floss. I mean. yeah. Yeah, we all put that, you know, we put that at the bottom of the priorities until you suffered a major fucking toothache. Anybody who's had an abscess knows you don't yeah. fuck around. No, you don't fuck around that. You remember Castaway? 
Yeah. You, that, that, oh, oh man, the scene where he has to knock the tooth out of his mouth with a rock and a fucking ice skate. I actually stood up and did the willies in the movie theater. I oh, like, yeah. I remember oh, watching that. I was like, oh. All right, next, uh, hi, just regular hygiene equipment. Soap and water goes a long way to keeping disease off your meat suit. Yeah. Taking care of your feet and your teeth by itself mm-hmm. is there is an good start. old there is an old military saying the cleaner your hands, the more solid your shits. <laughs> you are totally correct. <laughs> MRE <laughs> uh, fire starting shit, and the best fire starting shit to get is old school. Flint and steel and, oh, yeah. and any other kind of car, uh, cotton or something to start the fire. Best place to get that from your dryer trap. Mm-hmm. You literally can take that couple sparks. It's it's already on fire. You don't even have to add any accelerant to it. All right. Because a lighter, it, it only it'll only work so many times. And you know, if you get to, if you drop it or you break it or whatever, it's gone. Yep. And if you don't have the backup, which flint and steel, you're you're screwed. Yeah, you, you you'll freeze. Yeah, I mean, there's the two sticks method, but they have to be perfectly yeah. dry. If it rains, you're screwed. Just and uh, I'm actually we're working on this right now for my prepper group: batteries and solar panels. Now, granted, you know, in a crazy situation, it's you need to have comms. Mm-hmm. Comms need electricity. And if you have a you know two or three car batteries or deep cycle marine batteries and you can hook them up to the solar panels and keep them charged, you can run your commo and not be thoroughly cut off from every oh we got somebody beeping the Somebody's horn. Somebody's horny outside. We're getting yeah, they're getting horny. <laughs> but I mean and that you, you need that shit. And when it comes to like other medical supplies, get them right now. Rubbing alcohol and hydrogen peroxide. You, that stuff is dirt cheap right now. And if you don't have it and it goes south and you get a cut and, and it goes septic, you're on a ride for your life and you just might die. Now, a yeah. close second to that, and a lot of people don't know this, is you can buy these on eBay, it's uh, Etsy, Amazon, whatever. It's a colloidal silver generator you just need tap not tap water but distilled water without any minerals in it you hook it up to a dc batters battery of some type you have one diode which is pure silver and another one you, you can get away with uh something else it doesn't really matter it's ideally it's best if you have two silver diodes let it run for six to twelve hours You'll get anywhere between 10 to 25 parts per million of this uh, nano silver particles. That silver is lethal to virtually every pathogen in existence to include viral pathogens. Yep. And I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. So I left a bowl of water out with some lettuce in it for a good four weeks, let it get nice and ripe, where people were, you know, in, in my household were complaining. What the hell's about the matter it. with you? I put two tablespoons of colloidal silver that I generated myself. Boop, boop. Came back the next day. Everything was dead. Wow. I I looked at it under a microscope. (laughs) And uh, since we're talking about water and we are living in the 21st century and we have all this modern tech, there is a thing called aquapod. It's a bladder, a huge fucking bladder for water that you can put in your bathtub, and it comes with a hand pump. Hand pump. It's cheap too, so get it. Aquapod. Nice. I'm writing that down right now. Aquapod. It's like what, twenty five, thirty bucks on Amazon. Yeah. There's a dude in the chat goes by the name Zen Knox. He says honey is extremely good for keeping wounds uninfected. Yes, that they've been. They've been using honey since ancient Egypt times, or even before that. Yeah, since Babylon. You're right, but the thing with honey is, you literally got to have somebody on standby to keep that stuff in a poultice on your skin, mm-hmm. or you need to have be able to switch out the poultices. And a poultice is a, a piece of material with uh, medicine or anti-bacterial uh, stuff on it. Yep. It is what it is. Yeah, I assume in general that uh, if you wander around with honey on your skin, you might attract some uh, 
some creepy crawlies too. Oh yeah. Watch Gruntspeak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonculus.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the Meat Gazer box.